from loving Jesus, she says, oh, oh, can you please explain the forgiveness by the office of the keys, John 20, 23, and the Lord's Prayer. Uh, When I want to forgive a false teacher that I once had, he is forgiven. Is he forgiven? Or can only his confession absolution bring absolution? All right, so uh, what I want to do for this question here, I believe, I'm not going to go look at the Bible verses here, all right? Because I just I want you to get the distinction between between something. I, I'm I'm going to struggle to put it to words here in a second, but I, I'll give it to you, okay? But there's a distinction in forgiveness. I'm taking a drink of water there. It, it is there are two kinds of forgiveness that you're really talking about, and there may even be more. I don't know. Right? I haven't done the dogmatic parsing of this into nuts and bolts. Again, that's what the old dogmaticians did. That can be very valuable, but it can also be very distracting. But what you got to see is that, at the very least, when you're having these questions, you're asking about two different things in the presence of God. You're talking about the state of your heart, and you're talking about another man's state of his heart, meaning faith. Right? I'm not talking about how pure or how sincere you are. I'm talking about the state of your faith. Do you have faith? Do you not have faith? And then for you, it's the state of your heart in that faith, which desires to be at peace with all men, desires to reconcile with your enemies, and thereby desires to forgive and overlook all evils ever done against you and treat those who did those evils as those who had not. Okay, uh, that, that, is, that is the heart and soul of Christianity's love of neighbor that is unleashed by the forgiveness of sins that we have in Jesus Christ. And, and your desire is that you would enact that forgiveness outwardly in your emotional and mental attitude towards someone who you would seem no longer have a particular relationship with. And that is a laudable goal that you have, and I would encourage you to pursue it, but then to see that it has absolutely zero to do, at least directly and minutely, with his own salvation. Now, if you were to confront him and say, I forgive you, could that create his salvation? Yeah, it could. Could it not and harden him instead? Yeah, it could. So there is that. But the important thing is that his salvation relies upon him believing in the forgiveness he receives from Jesus, of which yours is also that, right? Um, but, but he has other places to receive this, right? Does he believe it where he receives it? And that is the forgiveness uh, which he would then have as absolution. So you can forgive someone in your heart, but absolution in the truest sense of the word is only going to be wherein someone receives it by faith, right? So we're dealing with forgiveness as your your posture versus forgiveness as someone else's faith. In this, then, his disconnect from the office of the ministry, if he has one, if there is no forgiveness from outside of him, but only from within, you're in sort of that reformed sacramentarian world of struggling to purify your own heart. Um, and I can't really answer it at all, right? Um, but what he needs is, Uh, is the office of the keys, right, which then officially can confirm for him that he is forgiven, that the posture of his heart, which is the desire of forgiveness, is indeed the posture of his God toward him, which is to authorize that absolution. That authority belongs to the church at large, all Christians in all places, but is not exercised by all Christians in all places, but is handed by the church in all times and all places to men locally, to exercise it, we call those guys shepherds for a reason. 